Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now this one's going to be a little longer than usual, so there are timestamps down the bottom if you want to jump around, because today, you can probably see by the fact I've struggled to get them both on the spinny thing, I am painting two figures. These are the new plastic Italians from Warlord Games, and they are pretty brilliant, to be perfectly honest. If you're going to pick up an Italian army, you are going to have to put up with the same three jokes everybody says about Italians, but they're really worth reconsidering. Uh, in particular, they are the only army in bolt action which actually has a negative uh, characteristic for their uh, national uh, characteristics, but despite that, they are an incredibly tenacious opponent on the defense. So something to consider if you do like playing defensively. As well, you're not going to see anybody min-maxing these guys. And as a friend of mine once said, you should play an army that you're going to enjoy even while they're losing. And when they can look like this, I'm pretty sure Italians, they might be worth a second look. So like I said, there will be timestamps for you to bounce around. There'll be a short review at the beginning. All of the paints will be listed in the description. This is a long one. So <laughs> without any further mucking around, let's get started. So let's begin by getting a quick look at the sprues. Now there are way better photos of these on the Warlord website if you want to check out the sprue in greater detail on both sides, but I figure a quick look can't hurt. And one of the cool things about the set is that you have the option here of the uh, desert helmets, the cork helmets, you've got the steel helmets, and you've also got a bunch of the feathers, which I do not know how these guys ever expected to be taken seriously wearing a soft fez into combat, but there you go. And one of the really neat things about this set over some of the other Warlord infantry is that you have so many rifles. At last, there are enough rifles in this set, I think there's eight off the top of my head, where you can kit out every dude with a rifle and not have to double up on poses so regularly. It's quite cool. Uh, there are two light machine guns in the box. So you've got uh, one up over his shoulder and one in a firing position, which is cool. If there is one thing about the kit that I would love to change, it's the fact that there is no anti-tank option in here. So you're missing out on something like uh, an anti-tank rifle or maybe a light mortar or something would have been nice, to be honest. But the trade-off is the fact you get so many more rifles. As well, the way that the Italians play in bolt action, you don't ordinarily want to take those small two-man teams because they're easy pickings for your opponent. So all in all, it's not a bad loadout. Now of interest is probably these two sets here. You've got the gas mask, like a, a box almost, and then you've got the gas mask bag. Now either of these would be accurate for the Italian troops during pretty much any point in World War II. So what I've been doing is using the uh, later, this is the M35 box, I think. This is the more modern of the pair. I've been using these on my Italians and I've been clipping these ones off and keeping them aside because they look identical, almost. <laughs> they look pretty much like the ones that were in use by New Zealand troops. So yeah, I'm slowly collecting a bunch of spares for that project too, but all in all, as far as Italians go, this is pretty cool. It's a nice set, uh, very well put together. And like I said, so many rifles, you're not going to feel like you're missing out. So let's go ahead and paint some. So to start off with, because it is the simpler, we're going to start by painting the desert uniform. Now the answer to the question, what color was this? Well, when Italy entered the war, they were woefully unprepared for the realities of modern combat. The production capacity of Italy wasn't up to even supplying its reserve divisions before they were sent into combat, let alone keeping frontline troops supplied. So there is an example when the uh, Italian forces and German forces captured Tobruk, uh, they basically made use of a huge amount of captured British battle gear. So later in you know the same combat, you had guys who were parading around in British gear shooting their rifles towards British lines. It was very confusing if you happened to be in a tin lid, but goes to show some of the disorganization. As well, the quality of the dyes and the cloth, it varied wildly. So because of the effect of the sun in the desert, if you're worried about getting the correct colors, don't be. Just paint lighter. 
So I'm going to use a lot of Vallejo colors today. Uh, if you wanted to stick to Citadel, for example, if you've got that, or Army Painter, anything like Morgast Bone or Skeleton Bone, any any light beige-ish sort of color, beige-ish, goodness me, that'll do the job just fine. So on the subject of Army Painter, that's what I've used to prime this fella. A quick spray of Skeleton Bone. Anything light, even a white or wraith bone from Citadel, will do just fine. And then we're going to go on to Tanned Flesh to paint his skin. Now we're going to need to tidy this up later anyway, uh, because we're going to dry brush over most of this. But by laying this down now, we're going to save some time on cleanup later. It's a little bit of a paradox, but don't worry too much. You'll find this covers fairly well. And when it comes to his uniform, it's really up to you. Uh, I've read it that trousers were washed more regularly than the tunics, so they tended to be lighter. But also in the desert, you had the sun pretty much baking everything. So it's up to you what you do the lighter section, or you can paint the whole uniform the same color. I'm going to do a little bit of variation so that you can see that, but it is your choice. I have here Iraqi sand, and I am going to flip him around and just start applying this all over his tunic and I'm not too fussed if I do hit his equipment because of course we are going to paint that anyway. So you'll see this doesn't cover terribly well. It is quite a light color, Iraqi sand. And I'm going to swap on down to a smaller brush when I come near his face and such. Now that's definitely going to take two coats for a solid color, but if you're batch painting that's not going to matter too much. I have now Dark Sand, this is another Vallejo color. And no matter what color you choose for the trousers, this is definitely going to be the right one for the pith helmet. So just go over everything, including goggles and the little rosette at the front. We will touch on that a little bit later. But let's jam on some Dark Sand there. And I'm also going to apply this to his trousers. Now that likewise is going to take two coats, and make sure that you are letting each of them dry thoroughly before you apply the next. We'll move on now to his cross belts and the gas canister or gas mask bag. For this I'm using Vallejo Game Color Khaki. Now this one is a nice pale khaki. Uh, it's, yeah, it's ideal for this. It's a very similar color to Zandri Dust, if you can't get your hands on the Game Color range. And then after using the Game Color Khaki, we're going to turn to Vallejo Model Color Khaki. So make sure you've got those bottles clearly labeled. And we're going to paint in his putties with this. This is going to look like a really neat faded sort of green-gray and is perfect for this. What we'll do now is to dry brush some pale sand over all of that stuff that we've just done. All of this soft material is going to benefit from a little bit of texture and this is going to save us some highlighting time later. So you want to load up a brush, something with nice soft bristles, and really work most of the pale sand off into your kitchen towel. Right? You do not want much on your brush at all for this. And once you're satisfied with how much you've got off, just start lightly flicking. The sleeve is a good place to start. As you pass over the area a few times, you'll see we pick up that texture in the folds of his sleeve. And that's what we want to do across pretty much all of this gear that we've painted already. So let's get that closer so you can actually see. Uh, so across the creases in his helmet, across his equipment on his back, be a little lighter on the khaki stuff because you don't want this to turn white. But pale sand on all of this desert equipment is going to work quite well for our dry brush. You want to be a little more generous with this than you might think. Don't go crazy with it. But when we shade this, a lot of this is going to come together and almost disappear into the miniature. So take your time and yeah, just lightly dry brushing areas where you want to avoid having to highlight later. Now at the moment, that is going to look pretty chalky and honestly a little terrible. But as always, keep the faith, this is going to turn out. So I'm going to go back to my skin tone, whichever skin color you've used and just tidy up the face and the backs of his hands with a little bit of this. This is nice and quick. Now one of the last areas of soft equipment we're going to paint is his water bottle. This had a felt cover, and this would be German Field Grey. 
Now, so that I don't forget, let's deal with this rosette now. Easiest way to do this is going to be to start with some white and just load your brush up with this. We're going to go ahead and basically dab in the whole thing. It doesn't matter if you hit the equipment, just try not to hit his helmet. Now the colors we're using here aren't the most important part. Uh, I am just going to use a really bright green. This is Green Sky from Vallejo. And we're going to blob this into the center and run over a little bit. Now because I don't have a Vallejo red quite light enough, I have here Evil Sun Scarlet from Citadel. Uh, I'm not going to list these paints in the description because they're not really particularly specific. Just any red, any green, any white will do here. So around the edges, you want to leave a little bit of that white in between the green and the red. Full disclosure, I have tidied up with a little bit of white in the center ring. Uh, you do want some of that to be remaining behind. Ah, oh, this can't be simple, can it? I've got here a little bit of retributor armor, but any gold color will do here. Let's just dot in the little brass thing in the center. And finally that's done. Now I question the wisdom of walking into combat with a giant bloody bullseye on your forehead, but hey, what do I know? Now some, well, most of our leather gear is going to be painted in flat brown. Now, the only exception is going to be the strap on his helmet and his rifle. So what I'm going to do is first of all paint in this strap on his goggles because that will tidy up the uh, rosette and that will stop bothering me. But as well, the, uh, the pouches on his chest are a little difficult to reach in some cases. And as well, there will still be a couple of uh, straps on his chest. If you can reach them, paint them in the leather now. If you can't, don't worry about it. Now that darker leather, we're going to touch on later when we go and paint in his rifle. But for now, I have a little iron hand steel and we're going to paint in some of the silver details. Now the cap on his water bottle would have been a bright silver. And honestly here, again, the color doesn't specifically matter. Just a light silver color. As well, let's see if we can get this in shot. I am going to paint in a part of the goggles. Ooh, and whispering and holding my breath as I do it. Try and leave a little bit of your leather color behind them to look like the straps. But yeah, the goggles themselves, I'm just going to paint over quickly in silver. Now, there's nothing to say here that you couldn't just leave the goggles silver or even just splash some black over the lenses. But if we're going to paint these guys to look cool, we might as well go the whole way. So I have here azure. Any medium blue will do the job. What I'm going to do is just paint the front of the lenses carefully just to define the shape of them. And that's all we're going to do on these for now. But we are going to come back and finish this off. Now earlier I mentioned his rifle, and for this we're going to use beige brown. So a quick coat of this over all of the rifle, don't worry too much. In fact, it's probably easier if you do cover over the black parts for now. And as well, flip them around, the inside of the stick, or handle if you want to be specific, <laughs> yeah, the stick. Uh, this would also be that wood color too. Now we're coming finally to our last couple of base coats. So for this I have German Camo Black Brown, which is a wonderful dark brown. Really nice, just off black leather color. So I'm going to paint in the strap for his rifle and swap to a smaller brush and paint in boop, his uh, chin strap there. And then finally, any black details. Well, a little bit of black here will do the job. Now the proliferation of weapons at the front for the Italian soldier was pretty bonkers. So feel free to use the box art as guide if you're not sure which weapon is which, or good old Uncle Google will help with that as well. Now once at last you've finished all of your base coats, go around now and do any last minute tidy up you need to to finish off those. And then we're going to go ahead and give our miniature a shade. For this I'm using Soft Tone from the Army Painter. Now some people will try and tell you that Soft Tone and Seraphim Sapia are the same color. Those people are wrong and they need your help. Soft Tone is very slightly less yellow and for what we've got here that's going to be better. So let's apply this 
fairly generously. I mean, you can see that doing its, oh, doing its thing already. That's so nice. And we're going to apply this generously over the whole miniature. And same as always, we'll then leave it for about half an hour to dry. Now it's important that wherever you get big gloops like this, just let it settle for a second, then shift it away with your brush. So the whole miniature, and then yeah, let's come back and have a look at what this looks like once this is all dried. And once that has thoroughly dried, you're going to have a trooper you could quite happily put on the table. All of those little details have settled and really given it a lot of shading and depth, and our pre-shade dry brush has really helped out with that, I think. Now, if you wanted to go back and highlight any of these colors, you could use a little bit of pale sand and just do it now, but I'm not going to. The only things I'm going to do are to touch up his skin. And for this, just a little bit of barbarian flesh will be plenty. A little bit of Iron Warriors, or any similar dark gunmetal color, just to fill in some of the highlights on the rifle. To be quite honest, you could leave this black, but I tend to like a slightly cartoony finish here. And then I've mixed about half and half of white and our original blue color. So whatever you're using, that's not a problem. And I'm just going to paint a little sort of half moon shape on the underside of the goggles here. And at last, one tiny dot of white in one corner, beep, and then in the opposite, beep, like so, beep, beep, there we go. The beep is very important. Now what I'm going to do is take him outside, hit him with a spray varnish of Vallejo's matte varnish, then I will come back and do a little bit of gloss varnish over the goggles, just to make those pop a bit. Any gloss varnish will do there though. Then we'll put a quick base on him and we'll have a look at our finished desert Italian trooper. And then at last, with a little bit of scrubby tuft applied there, our desert version is complete. And like I said, nice and simple, easy to replicate. There is an awful lot to do on his helmet though. What a lot of faffing around that is. But we'll put him aside and let's get on to the temperate uniform. Before we get to the painting side of things though, I have to tell somebody about this because I have spent the last two days driving myself insane trying to answer the question of how to paint Grigio Verde or Grigio Verde Italian Green Grey. The fact is it was extremely similar to German Field Grey and you'll see why I've got here three Field Grey alternatives in front of me. Now Italian Green Grey Similarly to the argument around how much more green Canadian battle dress was when compared to British, a lot of it is going to come down to field conditions, how long that uniform has been out there, how often it's been washed, and so forth. Now you could, quite feasibly, paint these guys in German field grey and call it a day, because this was honestly extremely close to the Italian uniform colour. I'm the first to admit, when I last painted these guys for the channel, I started from much too dark a color. But we're not going to use German Field Grey except for the cover on his uh, water bottle. So I'm going to put that aside for now and I want to show you these two. Now process of elimination, we've got here the Army Painter Field Grey. We'll put that aside. <laughs> and this sucker here, this is the German Army Field Grey from Warlord Games. It is an army painter paint, but this is from the Rapid Deployment line. Uh, they're pretty good. I've actually quite enjoyed using them. I have quite a few, but they are only available through Warlord. So I know some folks don't necessarily like stuff that has only one source. The fact is though, you'll see this is a little more green than the other field gray options we've put out so far. It is, in my opinion, your best choice for Grigio Verde. I know that that's not necessarily going to sit with some of you, but I'm going to use it anyway. However, there are a couple of alternatives, and I'll show you those too. Now, funnily enough, we're going straight back to German uniform. These two Vallejo model colors are pretty good for what we've got in mind. Now, German uniform, this is slightly darker. Gunship green is slightly less saturated. It's not going to look as vibrant as it does on the inside of the pot there. Once it's over a primer, it loses some of that richness, but it is a very good alternative for what we've got here. I'll show you a couple of that have been painted using these two different colors later on, 
But for the most part, what I'm going to do is we will use these two colors for the uniform. So after priming this fella with a spray of uniform gray from the army painter, a lot of these paints are going to be the same as we've used on our desert version, including starting his skin with tanned flesh. So a couple of quick coats of this. Now I did mention earlier how the tunics were generally washed less commonly than the trousers, so the dyes, which weren't particularly color fast, would end up running out of the trousers faster than the jackets. So that gives us a perfect opportunity to use the lighter gray for his trousers. And so I've added just a little bit of water to the German army field gray from Warlord. And let's go ahead and apply this to his trousers. You'll see this actually covers really well over a gray primer. And yeah, this is nice and quick. Let's just apply this. Now that's one coat over the top of that uniform gray, and I really like how it looks. Um, if you are picking up your Italians through Warlord, just go ahead and drop the paint into your cart. You're not going to regret it. What I'm going to use now, I changed my mind, of course. I'm going to use German Uniform, which is the darker of the alternative greens I showed you. But it does have a nice grayish touch to it. So you'll see this goes on just the same very quickly. And I'm going to apply this to his tunic. So there's your factory Grigio Verde, and there's your field battered and dried out version. Uh, again, up to you which one you like the look of, but we now need to go ahead and dry brush them. So I have here some Administratum Grey, it's just a light grey from Citadel, uh, and of course there is a Vallejo colour which is literally just called light grey, which would be perfect for this. Uh, what I'm doing is, well, very lightly at first, I want to start going over the uniform to pick out those high points and add a bit of depth. And at the same time, we're accentuating that kind of faded, battered gray towards the edges. These woolen uniforms, that's going to look just fine. Now, I'll be 100% honest with you, that's come out a little dustier in some areas than I might like. Uh, for example, on the back of his coat here, it's a little too much. So I'm just going to grab some of my uh, original green color, and I can tidy that up real quick. You do want to leave this looking a little rougher than you might think, same as with the pale sand on our desert dude. But anywhere that it has significantly changed that up in such a way you know that it's not going to look right, just go back with that base color now. Now at the same time, you can go ahead and tidy up his skin, same as we did for the desert uniform. And you'll see I've been experimenting here at the back. I'm going to go over his putties with uniform gray. Now, these were made from a very light field gray material, but they tended to wash out and become pretty much bleached gray very quickly. So this will work fine. Now, I did mention that for a couple of pieces of equipment, they were going to be the same no matter where he was deployed. So with a little bit of German field gray again, we're going to paint in his water bottle. And then some Vallejo game color khaki for his gas mask bag and cross belts. Now, when it comes to his leather pouches, I'm going to use black gray. Now, I've heard and seen in some publications that these uh, leather details, like the pouches here on his chest, or his waist rather, that these would have been dyed or painted so that they were also a green gray. But then none of the sort of pictures or even replicas or originals that I've seen, they all just look like faded black. So... I don't know. If I'm wrong here, I'm wrong because I think this looks better, and I haven't seen a green, sorry, a green gray version of these things, goodness me, uh, which is, which looks accurate. So take this with a pinch of salt. This is probably the Hollywood moment. Uh, his shoes, though, these would have definitely been a dark black leather. These wouldn't have been done in green. <laughs> Now we can return to some colors that are the same across both miniatures again. So beige brown for the rifle and any other wooden details. Now at the same time here, I've used a little beige brown just to touch in his hair. Whichever color you use, it doesn't really matter when you do it. Just do it before you paint the helmet. Now speaking of the helmet, I'm going to use German camo black brown again. And we're going to fill in his chin strap with a smaller brush. Boop and the strap on his rifle. Just that tiny wee smidgen of iron hand steel or any light silver on his water bottle there. 
a little bit of black to fill in the details on the rifle. Now save to last is the helmet because, once again, what color was it really? Uh, US olive drab would work, retractive green, even Russian uniform. I'm going to go with the darkest which I've seen which was accurate. This is German camo dark green. Uh, this one will work perfectly and looks the business. After a couple of coats to get a solid color, cruise around and do any of the last cleanup you need to do on this fella. Um, I have been touching up as I've gone, but you really should leave your cleanup to last. I was just being fussy. Now I've got here my Agrax Earthshade. I have given this a pretty good shake, and I'm going to get a big old brush to apply this. Same as with the soft tone from earlier, we're going to jam this over the entire miniature. So just bucket it straight on there. You don't want to let it clump up too heavily, so anywhere that you get big pulls of it, just drag it away with the edge of your brush and use it somewhere else. So, same as always, let's go ahead, whole miniature, and then we'll leave this to dry for about half an hour. So once our shade is dry, this is what we'll have, and like I always say, there's no reason you couldn't just base him up and put him on the table like this. He's not looking too bad. But there are a couple of things we can do to take this fella further. Now while I mentioned you could use pale sand to highlight most of the colors on the desert uniform, I'm going to show you a few variants on this one here. And we're going to start first of all with stone gray. Now stone gray is a wonderful color for highlighting field gray, whether it be German or Italian. Just a little of this on your brush. I probably want to water it down just a wee touch more than that. But anywhere that I want a nice sharp crease in his clothing, Let's go ahead and apply a little stone grain now. Now the beautiful thing about stone grey is that if you want to keep a muted colour to the uh, top jacket, so the darker green, that will also work as a highlight there too. Now I have previously used pastel green, which is quite a light, sharp green to do highlights. If you want to know what that looks like, haha, <laughs> I have actually got an example. Now this fella, he's done in exactly the same way. His trousers are also in the uh, darker green too, but I've used pastel green for the highlights, and I think that looks a lot more rich, not really the faded look that I was going for. So that's why I've used that stone gray, and I like how that looks. But same as on our other fella, a little bit of barbarian flesh to highlight the skin won't go awry. Now if you want to highlight the black leather, just a tiny bit of basalt gray will work really well here. You can use this, or you could use uh, Storm Vermin Fur as another really good one for highlighting leather like this. But it is your call. Now for all of his khaki equipment, you can use a little bit of Iraqi sand. Uh, or you can use dark sand, which will look quite a lot sharper. Iraqi sand will look pretty fierce going on, but when it dries, it does dull down quite a bit. Now just a tiny wee bit of green-grey will do to do the edge of his helmet and the little dippily bits there. And then your Iron Warriors, just to put in a little to the rifle. The last thing I'm going to do, which I think will add quite a bit here, is just to bop on the decals. Now these are pretty small, and I have seen that even on these really dark helmets, you would often get black stenciled stuff, but I'm going to use the yellow because that will look cooler. Once that's had some time to settle, what I'm going to do then is go ahead and matte varnish this fella, same as the other dude, and then we'll get a base on him, have a look at what this dude looks like when he's finished. And then at last, after varnish and base, this is what you'll have. And I think you'll see the difference between the fella that I painted, let's scrap him over here actually, the desert uniform and the temperate uniform, which one I really wanted to make sure I got right. But I think both of them look cool. This dude would probably benefit from a couple of highlights, but I did show you as well where you could stop with this guy. I just wanted to go that little bit further because, come on, these are cool. Anyhow, let's try and arrange them both on the old spinny thing here and uh, see if we can get a vanity shot for the big finish. So there, at last, both of them finished, our two Italian troopers from Warlord Games. Finally. My goodness. And that makes the longest, to date, single how I paint things. <laughs> 
So hopefully something there was interesting to you. The subject of Grigio Verde or Green Grey, i sorry Italian friends, I am probably murdering that word. Uh, it is really interesting because you've got so many factors to consider. Field conditions, wear and tear, washing, sunlight, and are we looking at reproductions that have faded or are we looking at originals? So on. So whether you want to get a force on the table really quickly, as in the case of the Desert Italian, or you want to spend a little bit longer and get something that looks pretty swish on the table, I think here are a couple of methods you can use. And you can probably cut some corners, and you may even find a green that you like better for the green grey. It's really a matter of personal taste, I think. So finally, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, and all of my wonderful patrons for keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Fred, and Jimmy. Your support lets me do the mad stuff like this. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all. More so than usual today, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.